mean, you had your chance and then you blew it. That is the most absurd statement of the year. Noise. <laughs> Noise. Oh, big B. I'm in my zone. I'm feeling it. Live from Rock Solid Studios in Granite Falls, it's time for Minnesota Sports, live with DJ Matty C and Paul the Shield Vold. Around. This is fantastic. Uh, not only that, but uh, we got a lot to get to tonight. Uh, without further ado, I'm your host, DJ Maddie C, a.k.a. Matt Callahan, a.k.a. Callie, a.k.a. Maddie C, etc., 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 and all the way from Woods and Shore Studios in Aiken, Minnesota, Paul Volt, the Shield, what is going on, Shield? I'm just going to flag for a false start here. About how things started here tonight. Looking forward to another great show as always. Me too, Voldy. We got we got some uh, awesome uh, things to talk about tonight, and uh, some good, some bad. But uh, we're just gonna have to go with it. Yeah. <laughs> That's the main thing uh, for here tonight. Just but, gonna have to go with it. Yeah. yeah uh, so we'll just uh, we'll, we'll go from there. But without further ado, uh, we got to get to one one thing. Uh, because it's it, it's pretty apparent that uh, we have um, we have Pickham right, and uh, week one was interesting. Mm -hmm. It was good. It was fun. Uh, we had a lot of zoners chime in, and we hope that you do it for again for week two. Because if you keep doing it each week here, it's only going to help you. Because hey, guess what? Um, you're going to have a lot of uh, cool things. Uh, you get to win zona merch. Uh, uh, shirts at some point, uh, maybe even some, uh, stickers, 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 and, uh, yeah, maybe even Ooh. some other cool stuff we'll, we'll get to, but, uh, without further ado, the winner of, uh, week one, and this person will get a free, uh, sticker is none other than, oh, Jimbo, Jimbo with the week one win, we give him applause. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that's funny. Shimbo. Shimbo gets the win for the pick'em this week, Voldy. Yeah, Voldy, how how are you feeling about that? How are you feeling about that? Uh, I'm feeling pretty I'm just happy. One of us. In fact, Sarah was also up there, too, and I finished just behind both of them with, I think, nine points this or something like that. Pretty happy. You know what? You know what? At least the smarts are the ones leading the pack here, so. Yeah, you're leading the pack. Yeah, there you go. They're leading the pack. We're getting going. We're having some fun with it. So uh, it's it's going to be fun these next couple weeks. So make sure to set your picks, do everything that you need to, and uh, we'll make everything happen here for you. Okay. So, but uh, anyway, let's let's get to tater tot hot take, Voldy. Um, yeah. Uh, it's it's uh, something that we got to address, and we thought this was going to be a game where the Vikings would win, but obviously it was not. And uh, yeah, we just got it was it was it was a bummer. It was a bummer, but yeah. we're gonna we're gonna get through it. We're gonna go from there. Um, but anyway, uh, let's let's get it rolling because we got to, we have to. So let's do some tater tot hot take. Fresh out of the oven, it's Tater Tot Hot Take. All right, it is fresh out of the oven tonight. And yes, it's uh, it's something that uh, I think is, is well put here in the lower third. Gun, foot, L. We already know what the, the prognosis is of uh, this issue. But... Um, Voldy, I want to start with you um, with the Vikings losing to the Cincinnati Bengals. 
And it, it was it was something that uh, we're bummed about. We're, we're bummed. Um, I have a lot of thoughts on this, but uh, Voldy, I want to start off with you. And uh, the zoners in the comment section, please let us know your thoughts. We want to hear what you want to have to say, too, um, because, uh, yeah, there's a lot to unpack. So, uh, Voldy, let's start with you. What are your thoughts on the game? Uh, let, let's start off with, you know, things that we need to um, fix uh, or, you know, things to address in this next game against the cards. So we're just going to start off with just this game. Just give me your thoughts on, uh, you know, what went wrong and... Uh, what we got to do to get it rolling here. <laughs> so, uh, Voldy, go ahead. Yeah. I mean, just the fact that nobody could really get a decent start on either side of the ball. Like, the Vikings committed more penalties in the first quarter of that game probably than they did in much of the start of the first half of the season this past year. I don't know what it was. False starts, holdings, the offensive line could not help themselves or Kirk Cousins with any time whatsoever on what was going on with their ability to get any sunny, any sort of sustained momentum throughout the start of the game. It was just embarrassing to see because literally just about every time a big play would happen, there would be a flag or next thing you know, it's first and 20. Then it's, you know, second and 15 or whatever. Yeah. I mean, they tried to make up for the fact it was it like 14, 15 penalties or something like that, that they had been flagged for and like only had, you know, accepted or it had been enforced 10 or something like that. That's just embarrassing just because of the fact that, you know, that sets the whole team behind. And the fact that they're able to come back at all in that contest and send it overtime was simply remarkable within itself to come back from that uh, double digit deficit, tie the game, ultimately get screwed over in the fact of some reviews in multiple areas. And you know what? It was just the fact that, uh, you know, that was the big thing that I took away from this one was the fact the amount of penalties never allowed Kirk in the offense to get fully settled in and you know when they did get rolling as well you know Thielen caught a couple of touchdowns that was nice Dalvin had a couple of nice runs but then again when you're backed up first and 15 first and 20 you know you are going to have some nice runs and it's just the and also throwing in as well the ability to stay on schedule is the big thing that I really took away from this one the most complete ball game either either you're right and it's it's frustrating when you're trying to, you know, understand what they were trying to do. And I, I think they wanted to run the ball with Dalvin. And I, I think it, it was prominent that the Bengals needed to stop the run. And, the, you know, they did somewhat. But you know what doesn't help? Is like you said, these stupid false start penalties. These penalties shouldn't be that hard, okay? It, it, it's not hard to remember a count, okay? Now, I remember I my butt got chewed out whenever I would, you know, go off, uh, you know, not offside, but false start when I played in Little League and things like that. It's elementary stuff that you'll learn, right? But you now you're in the NFL. You should know what the cadence is. You should know how Kirk works, okay? A lot of these guys have been in the league, for a, a good chunk. I mean, Udo, yes, first start. We, yeah, we get it. O'Neal, O'Neal had, he was okay. He wasn't great, but he was okay. But one thing I will say is that they need to figure out how to not go offside. And these holding penalties, they're getting beat on the inside. Okay? You need to turn your body. This is This is stuff that is fixable. Now go out there and do it. Is what I'm saying. So mm -hmm. it's, and then there's all these. Then there's the Kirk haters, and I I am sick and tired of people saying that Kirk should have done this. Kirk should have done that. Well, guess what? Kirk almost took the whole offense down the field after a BS call by the ref saying that Delvin wasn't down and he fumbled. He didn't fumble. <laughs> I think we both no. agree he didn't fumble. His he did. ass was down. Okay, he it was down. So. Um, I, I believe that this is something that we need to address with it. And people are like, well, you know, you can't always defend Kirk on this. I'm not. I'm just saying we lost this game because we were making stupid penalties that are fixable. And the defense, you know, 
There are times where they were good. There are times that they were not so good. Brashad Breeland got beat by Jamar Chase. Okay, it happens. I think Jamar Chase is a good football player. You know, that, that's what's happened. And, um, you know, Breeland, I think, is, is good too. But, again, you know, I, I think it comes down to a couple things with the secondary, you know, knowing the coverage coverages and things like that. But uh, the, ru- the run defense wasn't the best, and I think that hurt a little bit with, uh, with uh, losing Barr this week, uh, yep. maybe even this week too for that instance. But defensively, uh, I-, I think they'll work out the kinks. It's more of the offensive line figuring out <laughs> to get off the ball at the right time. It's not that hard. This is something that you can fix instead of sitting there expecting the the Vikings to, you know, expecting the Vikings to convert on third and forever or second and forever, things like that. But um, this this was a game where they needed to win. And I did say this on the Twitters, Voldy. I did say this on Twitter. And Mm -hmm. uh, I'm concerned. And the reason why I say I'm concerned is because there's one, there's not just one person that gives me a little concern. It's Rashad Hill. Rashad Hill. Yeah. That scares me, especially when you're going up against a Cardinal team, which we'll get into in a second, that is kicking your behind, uh, that kicked uh, 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 Tennessee's behind this past week. Channel Jones, five sacks, a couple of fumble, forced fumbles. Ooh, you know, it's just, Yikes. it's a, it sounds like a nightmare that w- it won't end. So again, Voldy, I, I, it's, it's the offensive line that needs to figure it out. And I think that they will. It's just a matter of guys, we need to figure this out or else we're in big trouble. Okay. So that's just uh, my thoughts on it. But, um, uh, I think there are some good things too. And, you know, I want to get to that as well. So, um, so I want to get to that as well. And I think the one yep. thing that we can um, get from this, too, is that there, that Jefferson had a good game. Thielen had a good game. I mean. They did. They, they, they did a great job. Um, it's, it's, uh. It's nice to know that, you know, we have those two guys and they can work it, you know, work out uh, some cool things with 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 with, with uh, beating these receivers. And Dalvin Cook, uh, you know, had some nice ones, too. But um, he did. it's it, there's some positive there's some positive reinforcement here. Um, but I, I'm feeling pretty good about some of the things uh, with with the offense defensively i thought pat pete did a pretty good job i think kendrick's got in there um so i you know there's there's some good things to be had i want i want your thoughts on this too voldy i'm going to get to the zoners real quick here yeah um jane Bo says shimbo is a little surprised i don't know why he should be surprised i i think he, he he's a great football mind um he is driving or i am sure he would have something to say oh yeah i'm sure he would i'm sure he would and we think he's got an elite mind you gotta respect it you do you really do uh, Easy A says it's not Kirk's fault for all these false starts. As people say, it's Kirk's. As people say, it is Kirk's fault for them. Got to know the cadence. Yep. Yeah. You have to, and this isn't something that you can just fix overnight, or you can, you know, it, it's it's something in practice where we're gonna go on two guys. Don't go on one. We're going on two. All right. When I say yeah. hut hut, you go. Right, but it's a little more complex than the NFL. But doesn't unfortunately it doesn't dismiss the fact. But Voldy, let, let's talk about what you did like. Uh, I mean, I think you got to like that they came back and they almost. Yeah. They, I mean, they sh- they almost went down and won the you know game. So what what did you like about what the Vikings did, taking away all the negatives? <laughs> Yeah, you take away all the negatives. I like to see the emergence of K.J. Osborne in the receiving yes. game a little bit. He had a couple of nice catches, and, you know, that's one spot that the, the Vikings were looking for this offseason. Of course, D.D. Westbrook in the return game. You know, a couple glimpses here and there, but never really got fully sustained 
in the returns as well on punts. But seeing KJ Osborne back there and uh, you know making an impact, uh, you know making an impact receiving wise, that's going to be one thing as the season moves along to see if he gets more reps and turns himself into another you know BC Johnson for you know that yeah. one season where he was the number three guy for the Vikings. Be good to see him being able to you know get himself set up because that's why we drafted him two years ago was to be that guy in that spot eventually so let's just see if it pulls out that was one thing i did like i did like as well uh, like we talked about with the game management uh, late in the contest be able to go down and tie the game as well greg joseph or you know him yeah. kicking you know not one but two 50 plus yard field goals there as uh cincinnati tried to ice him but still knocked the you know, knock the cover off the ball both times as well. I mean, you know, through week one, that's happy. That's great to see. So there are a couple of positives out of this uh, turd sandwich of a week one loss. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it sucks because it was probably one of the games that we thought was going to be, I wouldn't say a gimme, but this was some, some game that everyone thought they were going to win. Um, but a couple of things, then we're going to move on to, uh, we're moving on to, we're moving on to Arizona. Um, but I would say for me, it was Joseph and I want to tell you what I was concerned the first, I mean, when he was going out to kick the first time and, um, you know, some people can attest to that. And, but when they called the timeout, I was like, Oh crap. Obviously I didn't say crap, but we're this PG (laughs) show sprinkle of 13. Um, but, uh, the second time. I, I kind of – I was watching the kick. It was going, it was going, and he nailed it. I mean, he, he absolutely nailed it. So this was perfect for the Vikings, for them to uh, um, have the, have a kicker that you could be like, oh, okay, you know, this is good. But, again, you know, we got to go through the season here um, to see how that goes because we just always have bad luck with uh, kickers. But um, Yep. So I've, I think I like that the most. I'm feeling – I mean, what's what's there more to say? The guy is just incredible, man. And he just he, he continues to show why he's one of the best player best wide receivers in the NFL. He goes out mm-hmm. and he makes insane catches. He he's probably one of the best red zone wide receivers <laughs> in the league, Voldy. And that that's yeah. something that I think we all have to uh, consider for him. I think he he was fantastic. And Kirk, uh, I thought Kirk did a good job again. Um, I think he held on to the ball a little bit uh, longer yeah. than he should. I know a lot of people talked about that on Twitter. There were some times, but I think people kind of overreact when it comes to Kirk Cousins. So it's it's kind of frustrating when people get go off on a tangent and say, well, he, he holds on the ball too long a lot of the time. It's, it's like... Well, people got to get open, and sometimes you need time to throw the ball. It's not like you can just be like, okay, quick throw. We got to throw one second. Right when I get the ball, I got to throw. No, I, I mean, right. this, is, this is something we, we all have to consider. But I thought Kirk had a good game. Um, obviously, with the Dalvin fumble, you know. And J.J. should have had his touchdown, too. So that, that, was, that pissed me off, too. But... Oh, yeah, wow. that that whole situation. The reviews. If there's any point of emphasis the NFL's been trying to make, and they they put it in all their eggs in the basket for you know the taunting penalty, emphasis is actually getting in there with actual reviews and cameras to make sure some of these calls are right. You couldn't tell me that there weren't enough camera angles to show. Alvin Cook not fumbling the football. That was not a football, yet they call it, and they said there wasn't enough to review it. You're telling me in a stadium with 37,582 cameras pointed at the football that there's not one that's got a good enough angle to say, yep, that's not a fumble. Or the fact of the, you know, the down the line shot right at the goal show that, yeah, Jefferson was still up. He was able to get in the end zone or break the plane before the ball went, you know, before he you know, his knee was down. You're telling me that there isn't some sort of technology nowadays that we can implement to put into that to actually get these calls right. I mean, when are we going to get to the day where the football is going to have some sort of sensor on the goal line is once those two, you know, make that connection, that's going to signal a touchdown and it's good to go. I mean, that would be the easiest way to go, but you can't tell me neither of these calls would have been right in the first place if there would have been more cameras and more ability to at least 
focus on on the football and the play itself to get it actually called right. Right. And I I think they they completely goofed on both of those calls. And yep. I I think it's like well it it did it doesn't look as clear, but uh, the announcer said it. I mean, Chris Myers, Daryl Johnson, and even Mike Pereira said it that it should yeah. be overturned. But should. But no, they those refs weren't the greatest, though. I'll say that. <laughs> but you know, obviously, we can't put the refs in that. Uh, per, uh, can't put it all on the refs because the Vikings probably didn't deserve to win that game. Mostly, Kerf Doctor says I would trust the play calling of the Ask Madden feature versus our vanilla predictable offensive play calls. <laughs> I, I think I think we have to we have to think about that too. And I think Kubiak had some calls that I wasn't a fan of. I think at times we need to kind of. S- switch it up and maybe even pass a little bit on first down instead of just just Dalvin, Dalvin, Dalvin. You know, just l- let's mix it up a little bit. I do agree with that. But, you know, Zim wants to run first offense, but I think we need to switch things up too. It's not bad to do that, in my opinion, and some others. Yeah. Infrared cameras, says Easy A. <laughs> Infrared cameras. Uh, you trying hope. to see in the dark, EZA? What are we trying to do here? Turn off all the lights and uh, is it still Paul Brown Stadium? <laughs> but uh, I mean, that's old school. Yeah, that's old school. But uh, yeah, I mean, it, there's a lot of things I'd like to change. And the thing is, is, you know, that game's over with. And we're on to uh, Arizona instead of Cincinnati yeah. now. So let's, let's talk about Arizona. Yeah. Um, it's not looking great <laughs> for the Vikings in this game, especially after Kyler Murray went off. Um, uh, Kyler Murray goes off, and not only that, he absolutely just <laughs> kills it uh, for uh, the Cardinals. And DeAndre Hopkins was fantastic as well. Um, so it's it's going to be interesting because Tennessee's supposed to be a really good team, Voldy. Um I'll start off with this. I think that they're going to be, um, you know, they're going to be, they're going to be a tough. It's going to be a tough task. Chandler Jones, yeah, uh, they're going to put him right on Rashad Hill. I just already know what's coming. Um, oh yeah, and JJ Watts in there, and we know that our line does struggle with the interior a little bit, but um, it's it's going to be a tough one to overcome. They got to come together and. I believe that this team has enough talent to win this game, um, but they got to put it all together. Yep. Enough of the BS penalties. Enough of of the 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 pointing the finger at Kirk and everything like that. Go out there and say, you know what? They had a good game last week, but we can beat these guys, and I think they can. I mm-hmm. really do. But I'm not going to go out to say. Um, that they'll win, but we'll get to that in a second. Uh, Voldy, uh, what are your thoughts? I mean, are we are are you thinking that they can pull this off, or are we thinking that you know the cards might uh, blow us out? What do you think? If the Vikings do got a chance, two thirty eight, it's going to be a track meet out there here this week. Yeah. I mean, you got Kyler Murray, you got DeAndre Hopkins out there as well. And you got to try and slow those guys down. They're going to find someone else to get the football in their hands too. There's, there's a good amount of ability down there, especially with Cliff Kingsbury calling the plays there too. I mean, that's just going to, again, it's going to be a track meet there yeah. out in the big toaster that is in <laughs> Arizona. But you know what, if the Vikings are able to protect, you know, Cousins as well from J.J. Watt, from Chandler Jones. They got a pretty decent chance. But, again, the the offensive line is going to have to play the game of their lives compared to next uh, this past week, you know, because they got beat. They got uh, hampered by some injuries. There's going to be a lot of aggressive line play as well because J.J. Watt's a freak of a human being within itself. Chandler Jones is no slouch as well as we've seen from his week one performance and notoriously over his career. But again, it's going to be one of those. It may be a high-scoring affair if, if the Vikings offense gets everything corrected to the point where they can start sustaining a little bit more momentum. Who knows? It it may be one of those big games. But you know what? As the saying goes, there's always a chance. There's always a, so you're saying there's a chance, as we like to say here, uh, yep. especially with uh, the meme always going around. Um, 
we got Matt saying Hill is going to have to hold Jones every play just to keep him out of the backfield. More than likely, and I hate to say it, but uh, um, there, there's another zoner that has a comment here um, just before or just after Peter because I want to get to that. I went out and picked Peter. up the Cardinals' defense and fan. Uh, Chandler is about to do bad things to our O-line and Kirk. I really hope they plan. Yeah. I just, I, I really hope that they have a plan. And Pete, I don't blame you. I, I really don't blame you at this point. Um, Davis says, hopefully Derisaw can play. Here, here's what I want to get. And I think that this could be a big benefit because I don't think it, it, if if he does play, that'd be I'd be fine with it. But I just when you're on the road. I, you know, when you consider that you're on the road and the first start being against a guy like Chandler Jones, um, yep. I just don't want it to mess with his psyche or, you know, something like that. And and and, and lo- have him lose confidence because he's going against a guy like Chandler Jones. Now, mm-hmm. um, I think it would be I, – I think it would be a good test. But um, after having five sacks against Taylor Lewan, who was a – you know, pro bowl tackle too. So we can't forget <laughs> that. Um, you know, Rashad Hill, I think had, had a lot of issues and, you know, I think he's more better for right tackle than left, but um, with the injury to Darisaw, they kind of had to maneuver things a little bit, but um, I hope if he plays, I think it'll be great, but I, I just, I could see this going sideways pretty quick. So um, we got to yeah. consider that. Uh, I'm going to say this. I, I don't see them winning this game, Voldy, and it's frustrating because I want them to win. But I want to be too. proven wrong. I want to be proven I wrong I desperately want to be proven wrong in this one. Please, please prove us wrong here this week, Fikes. Yeah. We'll, we'll keep our fingers crossed, Voldy. We'll keep our fingers crossed, and uh, hopefully they can uh, – I already uh, picked them it. to lose on the pick em, so. All right. Well, there's a spoiler alert for all the zoners. Oops. <laughs> That's all right. But uh, we'll make it We'll we'll make it work uh, and whatnot. But uh, anyway, uh, let's move on to uh, uh, infinity rankings for this week. And we're going to yeah. NFL. And uh, obviously, after week one, um, I made some changes. Uh, because last time we did this, Voldy, yep. it was more um, – it was just kind of the preseason type of thing uh, yep. uh, and whatnot. But I've made some changes after week one, and this is going to change. So don't get on me if there's some team that you're like, why the hell are they still on there? They lost or things like that. Okay, just 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 bear with me, okay? Because uh, there there are some things that I want to I want to explain too. So you know, All we'll, right. we'll kind of go from there. But uh, we're looking forward to it. All right, let's get it going with some infinity. While many have power rankings, none have captured them all. It's time for Matty C's Infinity Rankings. Well, Voldy, do you feel good? Uh, uh, you're not saying, uh, Mr. Stark, I don't feel so good or anything like that, right? You're good? No, not recently. I have said it in the past before, just to mess with Sarah. But <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that is such a... I mean, the thing is, is uh, oh, such a great uh, MCU is just fantastic. A lot of fun things coming up with that. But anyway, we got to get to Infinity Rankings. Now, after week one, a lot of people can kind of, you know, sit back and say, okay, Matty C, like, what like, what are you doing here? Okay, what do you, wh- wh- what do you hope to accomplish with uh, after week one and whatnot? But I want to give you kind of the eye test that I, that I saw from this past week. There's some teams that you would say, Okay, you know, they they would uh they they'd be in it. They they'd be okay, but uh now after week 1, I think there's some things that are starting to become a little bit more clear. Now, okay. it's very it's very early on, but um the top 2 haven't changed. I'm going to give you a spoiler already. The Shocking. top 2 haven't changed just because I think they're just damn good. So, uh without further ado, here are my Infinity Stones. 
Starting off with number six, Matty C has the Buffalo Bills at number six. Why do I have the Bills at number six? Well, let me tell you this, Shield and Zoners. Um, yes, they lost to the Steelers. And the Steelers, you know, Mike Tomlin, you can never really count out the Steelers, Mike Tomlin and crew. Big Ben's back. He didn't have the greatest game. He, I think he threw like one touchdown. But their defense got the job done against a uh-huh. high-octane Buffalo Bills defense, and I give him credit for that. And I considered them at number six, too. But I think that the Bills will will adjust to this because they're, they I think they take on uh, Miami next, which, you know, Miami, I think it'll be a good game. Um, but I also think Buff, uh, maybe unless teams have figured Buffalo out, maybe they have. I don't know. But number six, I have the um, – I do have the uh, uh, Buffalo Bills, and I think they're going to figure it out. So I, I, I'm giving them respect where it's due. Um, number five, the Seattle Seahawks. Why the Seattle Seahawks? Um, I think when you look at Seattle, you, you have DK, you have Lockett, you have Russ. Um, their tight end play wasn't too bad, but I like the way that they have developed their players, and I like the way that Pete Carroll has kind of kept them in it. They've played like a, a playoff team. And Russell Wilson, I, I tell you what, man, as Gruden like to say, he, he just, he's so good. He, I mean, he's, he'll have some bad games, but then he'll bounce back and have just this, this amazing game. And their run game is good with Chris Carson. I, I mean, they beat the Colts pretty good. And the Colts are a good team, too. Um, and, yes, you know, Carson Wentz and all that hoopla, but – I got to look at them and say, okay, watch out. They're always going to be there. But uh, they're at number five for now. Number four, the Arizona Cardinals. Now, I know a lot of people have been kind of hyping them up too after that win against Tennessee. And I know, you know, some people kind of look at it and say, gosh, you know, you're going to determine that after one game. Right. Well, look at the weapons that they have. (laughs) Defensively, they shut Derrick Henry down. Uh, one of the best backs in the game, Voldy. Yeah, Zoners. thanks, Arizona. You ruined my fantasy day. Yeah, and then, the, you know, yeah, those Richards. Um, but it's it's uh, it's it's one thing to say that they're, they're going to be a team that I think we got to really watch out. DeAndre, Kyler, um, you know, they added James Conner, and, you know, he's had some off-and-on games and whatnot, but – I do like the way that they played. I mean, they walloped Tennessee. They kicked their butts. Um, and then, obviously, Chandler Jones. Um, J.J. Watt. I mean, that line is is, is damn good. Um, mm-hmm. Their secondary is good, Buda Baker and whatnot. But I think you can exploit their secondary a little bit. Um, and I think if the Vikings could do that this week, that would be preferable. And maybe they jump down in the rankings. But... Keep a close eye on the Arizona Cardinals. All right, uh, number number three, the L.A. Rams. Whew. This one was tough to me because I, I, I was struggling with the – because I did have the Buffalo but before I had the Bills at three too. But the reason why I have the Rams there is because Aaron Donald, Jalen Ramsey, that defense looked damn good. Okay, mm-hmm. and yes, I understand. You know, you're going against Andy Dalton. You're going against you know the Bears. They they don't have the greatest, um, they, you know, greatest team. But I think Matthew Stafford. I mean, I think he has kind of rejuvenated. He feels rejuvenated a little bit, and he had a hell of a game. Um, going from, I mean, Voldy. I think this is a perfect. Uh, Papa Callahan would be proud of this. But uh, it's going from the outhouse to the penthouse for Matthew oh, Stafford yeah. a little bit. The reverse so. Percy Harvin. Yeah, reverse Percy Harvin. <laughs> and I feel good about that for Matt. And Matt Stafford, and I know the Vikings have always beat up on the Lions, and obviously Stafford's just gotten destroyed by the Vikings uh, most of his yeah. career. But um, I do like the Rams a lot. And I think defensively they're set. Offensively, McVay – Sean McVay's got it figured out, and I think he really likes Stafford. And I think the friction with the Rams was Goff and McVay. And so McVay's like, I'm done with him. Give me somebody else. So yep. I have the Rams at three, but that could change <laughs> with with a lot of uh with a lot of time here. So uh let's get to one and two or two and one, one and two, whatever you want to call it. Uh two still Kansas City Chiefs. Uh they go in, they beat the Browns, um, and 
they were down. They are down like 22 to 10 uh, after the first half there. And who brings them back but uh, our guy, Patty Mahomes. And um, good Lord. I mean, even when they're down, they just find a way to win. And it's, it's what Mahomes does. And then also, I, I think there was a meme that he was talking about. He goes, F it, Tyreek's down there. And he's just throwing somewhere. <laughs> it's just, I mean, he's insane, man. I watch the game and I'm just like, you can't teach that. <laughs> you just can't. It's just, it's crazy. Accuracy is off the charts. Their play calling's fantastic and whatnot. So I got the Chiefs at number two, out of respect, obviously, mm-hmm. because number one, I think this is no con. Or, oops, excuse me, we're getting a little ahead of ourselves with the uh, uh, number one. I got the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Um, they were losing at, at one point, but it was about a minute left, and Brady kind of had that look. Too much time. Too much time for Tommy. Tommy goes down, does his thing. They get the dub. Um, defensively, I. I wasn't too impressed. I, I think yeah. there were some kinks that they need to figure out here. And I think, you know, Dallas did exploit that a little bit. And I thought Dak had a good game. Um, but I, I I think they need to patch that up. Offensively, I don't think you have to worry about a damn thing. Just make sure that playoff line, he can catch the ball um, for yep. one. That was just kind of a, you know, freak thing too. And then also, uh, I think it was one of the running backs fumbled. I don't know if it was. Ronald Jones, Jones Jr. Yeah. Okay, so Rojo did. Um, but uh, I think that's easy to clean up, and I think they're going to get back on track against Atlanta. So let's take a look at the infinity rankings. And, uh, again, Zoners, give us your thoughts um, uh, about these rankings. And, um, like I said, six, the Bills, Seahawks at five, Cardinals at four, Rams at three, Chiefs at two, and the Buccaneers at number one. We know a lot of people are happy about that. So, Shield, uh, your thoughts – Anything that you would like to change if you were doing Infinity Rankings? What do you got? You know, I know the last time that we did Infinity Rankings, I was kind of ripping you a little bit. You did? I I just laid it right into you. And I'm going to say, and this is probably a very small rarity here on the show, I'm thoroughly impressed with this top, with these Infinity Rankings this go around. The only maybe slight change, kind of flip-flop there at number six, Cleveland. I think we've seen a lot out of Cleveland because they came out and they were just shooting from the hip right from the get-go. And they did not let the fact that they were going into Kansas City once again, a city where they lost in the AFC playoffs this past year. They were literally one play away from, you know, going and uh, making a serious run at dethroning the Super Bowl champs. And in the playoffs too at their own place and you know what it came down to it once again it literally took just one play if baker mayfield is throw able to throw that incomplete pass which was picked off by mike jones enough about that right Mm -hmm. now and it's you know i think the browns come out with that victory in that contest but it was very surprising to see them kind of come out right off the get-go and basically get right after the defense for the chiefs too because we keep talking about how great the chiefs are offensively they've got these guys on defense no tyron matthew and all the main studs that they've had the last couple of years either hurt moved on or they got traded somewhere else so there are some holes that are there for the defense as well if you can be able to you know protect the quarterback long enough that uh, defensive line showed up when it needed to they're one of those uh, you know defenses that breaks and do- doesn't bend all that that i should say bends but doesn't break that's how the saying goes with that yep. too they show up <laughs> when they need to so you know having cleveland right there in the middle uh, is definitely, especially with the improvements that they had this past year, I probably would have put them at six, but Buffalo's also a really good choice, too, right there. The the Seahawks at five is where we had them at, correct? Yes, yep, you got it, yep. Yeah, I mean, no surprise there. I think Russell Wilson is one of those guys that's going to be underrated throughout his whole career sure. as well, even though he's been to the Super Bowl twice, won it once already, hasn't won the MVP yet, which is still a big Could shocking happen. surprise in every sense. But he's in Seattle. It's all that East Coast <laughs> bias that uh, yeah. gets thrown out for those as well. Uh, number four, who was number four again? I can't remember. Why don't you throw up those rankings? Yeah, let quick. me throw them up for you. Uh, it, it was it was Arizona for four. Arizona, yeah. okay. Yeah, I can see that too. You know, Arizona is definitely on the up and up. Boy, you get – You get three teams right next to each other. They're all in the same division. The only team that's missing 
San Francisco. They're the odd man out here in this situation, but you know, they're not too far off either as well. I'd probably at least put them in the top 10 for sure. Uh, But uh, you know, Seattle, then you go to, you know, you, you put the Cardinals right there at four, then the Rams, Finally, Matthew Stafford's got a team he can actually play with as well. Last couple years with the Rams, very underwhelming. You know, just try and find guys to fit the right holes and the molds and everything. Was Jared Goff the long-term quarterback there in L.A.? I, I don't I don't know. Got him to a Super Bowl a few years back. You know, that there was a lot of flash in the pan, and things just kind of lined up perfectly yeah. for them. Yeah. They had a really good defense that year, too, so that certainly helped in the grand scheme of everything. Now you got a quarterback that can facilitate the offense. Yeah. It could work with anything. He spent all those dead years in Detroit. He can make, you know, as a, a PG version of the saying goes, he can make chicken, you know, he can make chicken salad and chicken poop, basically, as yeah. well. So he can definitely make those guys look very, very good. They just got to balance out the run game a little bit and try to find some guys maybe out of the backfield, too. So the Rams there at number three is good. And we we move on to the top two teams here, one and two, Chiefs at two, Bucks at one. You know, no surprise there. Like I talked about with the Chiefs, you know, there's some holes there. There's the Buccaneers, too. You know, maybe a little bit of a Super Bowl hangover, especially with the secondary that uh, did get banked around a little bit in that contest. Sean Murphy bunting as well. That gruesome arm injury that he had. Yeah, thanks, Winfield. Way to go, buddy. Yeah. yeah, that's what happens when you play nine years in college, too. You're a grown man playing with uh, <laughs> even more grown men, too. But, yeah, but that's definitely one thing that's a, a big concern there is, you know, how the defense is going to go hold up as well. Yeah. But, again, situational football. They show up when they need to as well. So, yeah. you know, no surprise there at one and two. Uh, you know, the, the rankings look pretty solid to me. Wow, that's great. I yeah. think the, re- the, the, the main reason why, and I think – you were ripping me last time, and that's fine, too, because, you know, this is preseason rankings. But the Packers aren't on this one uh, Good. because they, they shouldn't be. You're right. You're, you're 100% right, Voldy. They should not be. But, um, you know, as you can as you can see with these uh, rankings, they got shellacked by infamous Jameis and the Aints, which is interesting in itself. I mean, it, I'm in a no-win situation with these two teams. But yep. at the same time, we'll get we're gonna get into that for ARA. But uh, um, let's throw the infinity rankings up one more time for people that are kind of uh, joining in too. This is what I have. Give us your thoughts, and if you guys think that uh, we we should change some things, obviously I think Easy A you know mentioned too. Uh, at some point, the Browns might be up there. They might. Oh, yeah. They, they, they totally. I mean, they were they really might. And it hurts because OBJ is out. Yeah. Um, again, this week it just reported. And um, you got to watch out for them. They, they, you know, uh, Nick Chubb, hell of a back. Stefanski's done a great job in Cleveland. I, you know, I, I wish him nothing but su- success too. But yeah, the Browns definitely. The Bills got to figure it out though. Uh, that's that's the main thing. So, but anyway, that's gonna do it for Infinity Rankings this week. Um, I appreciate all. You know, hey. People aren't complaining too much about it. I like it. Packers aren't in there because they sucked this past week. And <laughs> Mets, I think, can agree with that. And intern guy, former intern guy, Coom, and all those guys. So, uh, so uh, I'm sorry, not sorry that they lost so bad. But, hey, you know, everyone in the NFC North is 0-1 right now. So there's that. But, uh, yeah. Uh, did we score the most points though? We did. We're 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 leading the NFC North right hey. now. We're leading the NFC North. Welcome Hopefully to the we... suck seller, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's uh, always room for more. Now let's now let's remember too the NFC East or AKA the NFC Least, as Mikey Ryan would say. And I kind of want Mikey's input on this uh, if he's listening back to it. But uh, hope after one week it, it doesn't look good but i someone's gonna get a win because the packers take on the lions this next week yep. so um someone's gonna have uh, a lead at some point here but anyway uh let's get it going with some absurd or approved because uh we got some football we got some basketball college football oh man there's a lot of things going on and uh the booze hound josh gordon oh boy we better get it going with some absurd or approved It's time for everyone's favorite segment, Absurd or Approved. All right, Voldy, it is time for Absurd or Approved, so why don't you... 
right on my for us, please. Well, the Timberwolves are making moves here this offseason. Maybe not the moves that everybody's expecting here right off the bat, but the Minnesota Timberwolves this past week did announce that they did re-sign restricted free agent Jared Vanderbilt to a three-year, $13.8 million contract and playing his first injury-free season since his junior year of high school. Of course, the Timberwolves do have Vanderbilt for another three years in his 20, age 22 season. 64 games, 30 starts this past year, which did include five and a half points, a little over uh, five and a half rebounds per game and nearly 18 minutes a game this past season. Looking at it as well, the, the uh, Timberwolves did also re-sign Jordan McLaughlin to a new three-year yes. deal over the year as well. But that does also include a, a little bit of a two-way contract situation for him as well. But McLaughlin looking like to be a maybe another significant role for him this season. Absurd or approved Vanderbilt uh, being able to, uh, you know, will this deal help or hurt the Timberwolves going forward? Um, You know, it, the Wolves are the Wolves, obviously. Yeah. I think we all agree on that. Um, but – it's got my stamp of approval because I do like the way that they've used uh, Vanderbilt. I think he's a good defender. Um, I also think that he is a solid. Um, he's a solid uh, defender as well as he can make some shots here and there. And the Wolves really like him. Um, obviously, he was a re- restricted free agent. He's only twenty two. I mean this hmm. this guy's a this guy's a, a young dude. Um, you know, he, I think with with within time he's going to be a good player um and he he's a five star he was a five star recruit at Kentucky so i i i like it um i like that they're getting younger and i think it'll it's a good compliment to have these role players and um not only that but you, you add a role player like him and then also you have Patrick Beverly which i, I still pinching myself that did, did that really happen like you said is that for real but uh i mean i love it don't get me wrong but um i, I just think it's 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 a good it's a good idea to 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 sign these younger guys that can make an impact and i think he's a solid defender i think he needs to up his game a little bit though um he needs to to score a little bit more um he, he's only he was only averaging like 5.4 points 5.8 rebounds only 18 minutes a game but we need those role players to come in and uh, help out. So I, I like the signing. I, I think it's going to help. Uh, Jordan McLaughlin, I think, so. another – a lot of people do like him too. So I like the core that they have. And I, I think with some leadership from Beverly, and I want Cat to kind of take some leadership roles here too um, and, uh, you know, help w- will this team and obviously stay healthy. I think it's a big thing, especially for D'Lo because, you know mm-hmm. – you know, there's a lot of been, there's been a lot of talk, and I know the Ben Simmons thing is still uh, apparent, but we'll see. I don't know, we'll see. But I like it. I do like the signing. I really do. So stamp of approval, Voldy. What do you? Think? Well, I think this is just really going to help out the Timberwolves from a depth perspective yes. because we we did see this past year, you know, not a lot of consistent play from the big guys that uh, you know they wanted to see. Not a lot of a cohesive time on the floor for you know for for D'Lo for Cat as well out there. You know, they did make some moves this past you know uh, this off as well. Juancho Hernan Gomez is now in Boston. Yeah. Uh, Jared Culver is now gone yes. too, and you throw in Pat Bev into the mix too. I mean, that's going to be a really nice piece. But you got to have. You got to have five guys out on the floor. You throw the three out there with Pat Bev, D'Lo, and Cat. Who are the other two guys going to be? And, you know, it could be a situation. Vanderbilt maybe not starting all the time as well. I mean, right. half the games he played this past season, he started. So, at least from a depth perspective, any way that you can get some guys coming back from a more cohesive side, especially now going to a full off season for the start of the year for uh, uh, the head coach, Finch, yeah. uh, you know, that's going to be a really big help, too, to have guys that are familiar with the system. So it's got my stamp of approval, too. One thing that I that does concern me a little bit, and I think this is going to be uh, something that, you know, that, that can be addressed. I mean, he's had some injury issues. I think he had some yeah. injury issues in Kentucky. But um, I could see him be, uh, being a really good role player for the Wolves, and that's what they need. They need those types of guys. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I, I stamp of approval with the signing. So, um, I think Rosas, the jury's still out, and I think a lot of people right. would agree with that too. But uh, we'll see what happens. All right, 
Next one, Voldy. <laughs> well, uh, for week number one, the Saints took on the Green Bay Packers, and one of those starting quarterbacks did finish the contest 15 for 28, 133 yards passing, no touchdowns, two interceptions. Now you're wondering which starting quarterback that was, and, well, you probably guessed wrong. is not Jameis Winston. That was reigning NFL MVP Aaron Rodgers, 38-3, to the loss, two interceptions, and a game where he quoted it as saying, I played bad, and looking at it as well, as the game did progress, not a lot of consistency on the offensive side, at least I didn't watch. I was more focused on the Browns-Chiefs game because I knew that one was going to be a good one, and I didn't want to give uh, Jameis Winston any clout whatsoever in the contest to uh, in that win. But, you know, kudos. You know, it was a lose-lose situation for us here on the show, regardless, Aaron Rodgers and Jameis Winston, Packers, and the Aints as well. But, you know, what? one team had to win. Uh, you take it with a grain of salt, basically. But, you know, as the game did progress, at one point, the, the Packers decided to bring in Jordan Love in the late stages of that contest, too, which is a very interesting situation given the whole offseason, all the, yeah, I guess you could probably call it turmoil as well. But is it going to be absurd or approved with Jordan Love coming in late into the week one contest are we seeing the beginning of the end <laughs> oh voldy it's it's it, it's one of those things where uh it, 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 sprinkling in the seeds yeah, baby yeah, sprinkling the seeds a little bit um you know at first i would you know people were thinking too and i'm i'm still under the, the impression of this too I'll, I'll give some benefit of the doubt here but um Aaron Rodgers, I feel like it's a little bit of sabotage, a little bit, somewhat, uh, for mm. the Packers. Um, I, I think from what we saw, or from what anybody saw from that game, um, and lose by that much, and only putting up three freaking points, <laughs> three points, really, with Devontae, with Aaron Jones, with uh, the, the A.J. Dillon fella, I mean, what the hell happened? Yeah, how do you mess that up? That's my question. But, I mean, you know, LaFleur absolutely embarrassed, and Pat, or Roger says it's just one game, and he said I played bad. Well, maybe you should have showed up for ODA, Odas, and things like that. But he didn't, and this is what happened. You lose to mm -hmm. infamous Jameis and the Aints. You lost by 35. 35. Outstab. 35 points. Now, I'm not like I'm not a big believer in he's trying to sabotage. Maybe it is just one game where he's like, you know, I, I'm just we're just gonna get killed. I'm gonna play like ass and go from there. It could. It could be that, but it also could be. It's you know, Moss made these words famous too. Uh, he said, I "Play when I want to play." do what I want to do. Maybe that's what Aaron Rodgers is doing. He's saying, I want to do what I want to do. But that was a awful performance from the Green Bay Packers. And, you know, they'll talk about, like, well, the Bucks played terrible against the Aints, and they went to the Super Bowl. They won the Super Bowl. But this is a different scenario. This is a completely different scenario, different team um, and whatnot. But they get, and of course, they get the benefit of the doubt. They play the Lions next on yeah. Monday night. I think it's Monday night, right? Oh, Monday yeah. Night Football. So um, they they got to get it figured out quick, and they, they have time. But uh, I think this is the beginning of the end. It's the beginning of the end, Volti. I agree with you. It's got my stamp of approval. The reason why I say that is it might not happen, you know, at certain points you might be like, oh, well, maybe he's not. Maybe he's not. But they're planting the seeds. They're planting the seeds as you're doing right here. So it's got my stamp of approval. I really do think it's uh, the beginning of the end. So. What do you think, my friend? I mean, I've been keeping my eye on the situation as well. I'm not going to lie. I'm a fan of the, the Pat McAfee show and their sure. Aaron Rodgers Tuesday segment as well. Calm, cool, and collected. Exactly the sign that you want to see out of a freaking psycho sociopath that probably Aaron Rodgers <laughs> is as well. He is just... He is just playing everybody to a T right now. He is just playing them like a fiddle right now. And I <laughs> cannot wait to see how this all goes sideways for everybody. But at the end of the day, Aaron Rodgers, again, he's got nothing left to prove. He's done it all. He's seen it. He's been there and back as well. Uh, you know, it's unfortunate 
except uh, for the fact that it couldn't have been more. Couldn't have been more points. Could have been a 45, 55, 65, 1,005 point loss for the Packers as well. Just keep soaking it in, baby, because of the fact that it is all going to go downhill. It is going to be a glorious ride to the bottom of the pile <laughs> and just watch it all happen. It's got my stamp of approval. It's beginning to the end. Let's just keep dropping in the seeds, baby. The seeds <laughs> of deception. And if, well, from the Woods and Shores studios here in Aiken, it's raining too. So, is it? you know, oh. it's, it's a good little crop season right there. We're just going to keep on soaking it in, baby. And just soaking it in. That's what you want to see. But, uh, but to answer your question, though, I, I, uh, too, with, with, with Jordan Love, I mean, putting in your backups because it was that bad, it, it just is a telltale sign. Yeah, there's there's something up here. There is something. Yep. Up. We all we all saw it too. So, um, but again, like we said, you know, the Vikings lost too, but not as as bad. They're not as bad. Okay, let's let's not forget that. But we're loving uh, every second of this. But um, also, let's not forget you lost to infamous Jameis. You made him look like a Super Bowl quarterback. Infamous Jameis and. Should Famous be like a teams. loss and a half. There should be oh at one point five or something like that. That's crazy. You know, yeah. and honestly, he didn't even play that good. To be honest with no, you, like he, really he didn't, didn't. It was he had like a hundred buck fifty. He had five touchdowns, sure, but like, yeah, he wasn't that. Good. <laughs> He's just no, he infamous wasn't. Jameis. Just infamous Jameis. He lost to infamous Jameis. I, and I yeah. picked Green Bay to win because I thought they were gonna win. But me too. Not 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 my issue, but. Uh, at the same time, you're in a no-win situation with these two teams that I dislike very much. But anyway, besides the point, Zoners, what do you think? Especially the Green Bay uh, people as well. I want to hear what you guys think. Uh, so we'll go from there. Uh, next one, Voldy. Well, at a shocking turn of events, Florida State football still stinks. Uh, ah! Just because of the fact that they took a week one loss on the chin. They didn't lose to, like, Miami or something like that. They lost to, of all people... Jacksonville State, an FCS team, 17 to 14, was the score at one point with six seconds to go. Well, game winning touchdown puts the final score. I think it finished out uh, being 20 to 17 or something along those lines. And well, Florida State has been taking a lot of bad losses on the chin last couple of years. A little bit of turnover with their team as well, coaching wise. And Mike Norville did say that, uh, you know what, after the loss, that his team was sick to, sick to its stomach and vowed that their players would not quit on the season in the face of the dispiriting loss in the beginning goings of the season. But is it absurd or approved? Will Florida State be able to bounce back and have a respectable season after losing to Jacksonville State? Well, they should learn how to make a tackle first. Um, yep. <laughs> that that was uh, embarrassing. Um, yep. And the reason why I say that, and, you know, I don't want to, because, you know, they're, they're, they're supposed to be a really good football program. Now, let's, let's not forget. I mean, yes. And famous Jameis went there, but he he did win he did win you know uh, a, a national championship and whatnot. And Xavier, uh, you know Xavier had some good good times with Florida State as well. But them losing to Jacksonville State, I mean, come on, I mean it's an FCS school, yes. But we've seen some FCS teams beat some uh, top programs too. So let's not forget that uh, Gophers. Um, but it's the it's one thing to say it's with six minutes remaining. I mean, all you had to do was make the tackle. Yep. Their corners couldn't make the tackle. That concerns me. Um, the the co or the, the the Florida State coach said it was unacceptable, and yeah, it is unacceptable to be honest with you. Like if the Gophers lost to Miami this past week. That's unacceptable. You can't lose to yeah. freaking Miami of Ohio. Of Ohio, I should say. I'm sorry. I should have clarified The fight that. in Big Ben Roethlisberger. Yes, yes. There you go. Uh, mm -hmm. But y y you don't lose to that team. They did win. No. Um, so th there's that. But uh, they, they lose to Notre Dame in overtime. But then when you go against Jacksonville State and lose, I don't think they're going to bounce back. I, I, I think uh, – I really think that it's uh, – um, the, I got to figure out the way you worded it. I, I, I'd say it's it's got my stamp of approval. I don't think they're going to be back from this. 
um, because you, you can't lose to a team like that and miss that many tackles, okay? Especially when you had a chance to just tackle and win the game. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's on my stand for approval. I don't think they're going to be able to bounce back. So, Foldy, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, we've seen some, you know, some FBS teams lose to, you know, FCS teams as of late. But that FCS team has been, you know, NDSU. True, They've beaten true. Kansas, Kansas State. They beat uh, the Gophers all those years ago. I mean, they've they've roughed up a few FBS teams in their times on their way to the national title as well. Jacksonville State, I mean, I don't know them personally. I don't know them from you know, one team to another. I thought I had to double check it first and make sure that was, this wasn't Jackson state, uh, the fighting prime time, you know, fighting neon Dion's down in uh, <laughs> Mississippi that uh, didn't knock a win over his alma mater, Florida state. Sure. But you know what? I'm looking at this, the first FCS loss in school history. That's not a record you want to keep there no. for coach Mike Norville as well. Look, I see it this way. You lose to an FCS team. You are probably not going to be winning a whole lot of games in the ACC to begin with as well. I don't know what their schedule looks like. I don't know if they've got Clemson. I don't know if they've got, you know, Virginia Tech. They've they yeah. got Duke. They've got, obviously, I hope that they, they still play Miami as well. Keep that, my, they keep that, uh, you know, that uh, state rivalry going as well in conference too. Yeah. But, you know, with the team that they've got, uh, I don't see this being a real bounce back here for them as well. So I wouldn't be surprised if Norville gets fired too. But, uh, yeah. yeah, you can't have a respectable season here for the year too. Right, and it's it, it, it's one thing to say that they, could they bounce back? Sure, I sure. mean, I I, 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 you know, don't listen to me. If they bounce back, they bounce back, and all will be well. But a heartbreaking loss, and then you go to play an FCS team that you should beat. I'm looking at the play right now, Voldy. One miss tackle, two miss tackle. Yeah, three. Two. I mean, it's it's too many. And you can't you can't lose to that. I mean, that's that, that's yeah. terrible. Especially you should just be in. Uh, you should have at least like ten DBs. No, or you should yeah, prevent at least, defense. At least no that, prevent defense. I mean that was a terrible. That that was awful. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't think they will. So I, I think uh, I think they're. I think you can just uh, end their season right here. But uh, who cares what we think, right? Exactly. <laughs> Just a couple uh, of donuts talking sports. Yeah, that's a good point. We're still, yeah. Where is Terry, by the way? Where, where is Terry? Oh, Terry, we miss you. Anyway, uh, next one, Voldy. Well, we go from one horrible coaching situation in a Power 5 conference to one that, well, is now open as – uh, the University of Southern California, the USC, fired head football coach Clay Helton, and that was announced on Monday. And that did come two days after that the uh, Trojans did suffer a home defeat, 42-28, against rival Stanford in that one. Well, Helton is still under contract for the next, well, for this season, next season, and also the season after, but his contract is bought out in the $12 million range, too. But uh, Dante Williams is going to serve as interim head coach. Now, this coaching role for the USC Trojans has been a labor of love the last few years and in the situations that have been where they tried to bring back some greats. They have Steve Sarkeesian there for a time. Well, he drank himself out of job. They had Ed Orger, Orgeron at one point, Coach O, and they couldn't keep him around, unfortunately. That's too bad for them because, well, it worked out pretty well for Coach O in that respect. They tried to bring in Clay Helton. You know, it worked maybe for recruiting. I don't know, but but overall, it's not good. It's definitely not uh, a good situation overall. So it's kind of the same question we had for the last story as well. Will USC be ever be ever able to return to its once dominant self out there in the Pac-12 and compete, of course, in the college football playoffs? Depends on who they get. Yeah. Um, and I think the last time that they were prominent – was probably the Pete Carroll era, I, I, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. um, but then also there were allegations, and obviously they took away Reggie's Heisman, which I think he should get back. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, you know, Carroll bolts for the NFL, and obviously he's finding success in Seattle. But oh, yeah. um, it's it, it's one thing to say that. Um, Helton, I mean, he's he, – He's had a pretty doggone good career. I mean, you know, he, he had a winning record and everything like that. But um, 
you know, from what I understand, they were embarrassed against um, uh, uh, Stanford. And I think that was the, the straw that broke the camel's back, unfortunately. Um, one thing to note, too, is that it's – they want to get back to that uh, place of, like, you know, with Liner, with, with Lundell White, with Reggie Bush, Mike Williams, um, even though he didn't have the best NFL career. But uh, <laughs> it's – you want to see us like I feel like the game would be better with you know USC being dominant as they were, um, but also I I would add to that too um, they got to find the right coach and yeah we all know whose name has been floating around and obviously I I think there's is there some truth to that maybe I don't know um, mm, no. he hasn't bit yet or they haven't I don't think. There hasn't been any leeway to that yet with PJ Fleck, but I just I don't I don't think that's going to be the case here. Um, you know, I, I like Helton was for excuse me forty six and twenty four for the beginning, and it's they they want to find the right person, they got to find the right person, but I don't know who that right person is, and um, right. you know they got to I I think they will at some point, but I don't see it anytime soon. Um, so I, I would probably say that it's got my stamp of approval. I don't see it coming anytime soon, but I think it's going to happen because you just got to find the right person for the job and it hasn't been right since Pete Carroll. So, yeah. um, if you really want to get Fleck, you're going to have to really throw a lot of money at him and whatnot to get out of that contract with Minnesota. And some people yeah. think that it's going to, ha- I just, I don't see it happening right now with Fleck. I can tell you that. Lord, I hope it doesn't. I hope it doesn't. So that's the only thing the Gophers got going for him right now. <laughs> yeah. I'd Sad hold on. Let's, true. you know, at the season will tell a lot for Fleck as well. So we'll yeah. see. But Voldy, what do you think? You know, it, it, I, I like the fact that you brought up, it depends on the right coach. And you know what? I don't know a whole lot about the coaching side when it comes to college. But, you know, to the pro side, you could definitely see a lot of names being thrown out there. That's Urban a little bit was, yeah. comprehend. Yeah. Urban Meyer was one guy that a lot of names have been thrown out as well. But saw some earlier this morning saying that there's no chance that he would leave Jacksonville to go to USC. Right now, that is. I don't know. It could be changing minute by minute, hour by hour. We all know the success that Urban Meyer had uh, with the college ranks as well. But, you know, USC, that's definitely a dream job for a lot of people. But right now, it's definitely more of a nightmare job because of the fact that they've been off and on good for so long. I mean, the last significant that they had – 2016 when they won the Rose Bowl with uh, Helton in the fold there. And it's, you know, other than that, there hasn't been a whole lot of uh, sustained success for the USC Trojan football program as well. So, you know, it, will they ever return? It might take five, six, 10, yep. 20, a uh, hundred years. I don't know. <laughs> College football is still going to be a thing in a hundred years. I'd like to think so, but you know what? It's on the uh, fire. Yeah. Future, mm, I don't see it happening anytime soon. Depends on these super conferences too, so there's that to factor in as well. But yeah, I mean, I I hope they do because I feel like it's good for college football. And that's you know when they were the game that they I, obviously they lost this game, but the game that they had against Texas was probably one of the best college football games I've ever seen. Yep, um, that was so much fun to watch. Uh, um, so many, so many guys that yeah, went on Vince to play Young, in the NFL in that game. Vince Young. I think was it Jamal Charles on that team too? I, I can't uh, sure, we'll go with that. Yeah, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, I yeah. was a, always was a fan of Lindale White. Lindell White, Lindale yes, White was he went to the G. Titans. Yeah, went hell to the Titans, yeah, um, in the NFL, had had a okay career. wasn't You know, wasn't yeah, he made his suit. money? He got his pension. Yeah, so. yeah, there you go. <laughs> I'll put it. Also, like that. it was funny that we we're talking about Pete Carroll. Pete Carroll had a birthday the other day. Oh well, like there's seventy two or something like and that. And he's but still like a spring chicken. He's still, he's still going, man. He's yeah. still going. He's an old man, but he's still getting it. It's, I think he's taking after Bud Grant right about now. That's oh, what, yeah. what I'm thinking here. But uh, yeah, um, I guess we'll see you with USC. Um, yep. All right. Last one, Voldy. Let's let's just get this taken care of. Go ahead. <laughs> well, the moment we've all been waiting for that you didn't know that you've been waiting for, well, it's finally here. The NFL Players Association has determined that Josh Gordon has successfully completed his NFL Monitor Treatment Program and has been recommended to the league to be once again reinstated for the 9,300 
42nd and a half time again, once again. Josh Gordon is now going into 30 years old, is awaiting final approval from Commissioner Roger Goodell for the 8,375th and three-quarter time as well to be reinstated back in the league. But Gordon did say that he is vaccinated against COVID, and it said he is ready to play as well. He did submit his reinstatement letter back in July, so now that it's uh, you know September, uh, it's going to be a good amount of rust to be shaking off those wheels there as well after going under treatment. We already know the entire backstory. You know, he went to the Zappers for the fan-controlled football yeah. league back in February to play with his old teammate Johnny Manziel, John Manziel, excuse me, <laughs> since he's a grown-up now. But of course, we we know the exploits. He went to the Browns, got kicked out of the league seventeen times there. Went to the uh, Patriots. They ended up getting the Super Bowl, ended up pawning off his ring for some more money for that one. Uh, got kicked out of the league another 13 times there. Goes to Seattle, uh, makes a nice run into the postseason, and gets kicked out of the league for the 97th <laughs> time there as well. Absurd or approved with the likes of our favorite from the top 10 in Famous <sighs> List. With Josh Gordon potentially being reinstated for about the one zillion time, is it absurd or approved? And when will he be on a team or when uh, what's more likely to be happening? Will he get on a team or will he be suspended again? At this point, I think he's going to get suspended again. And I, I am not joking about this. And yes, I understand. I get it. Okay. I get with, with addiction and everything like that, but good Lord, how many, how many, how many, how many, how many, how many, how many chances have we given Josh Gordon. I mean, the NFL, I shouldn't say we, but the NFL has given Josh Gordon. The NFL PA recommends Josh Gordon be reinstated. Why? Why? I mean, this, this, this keeps happening. Why does this keep happening? It's because he doesn't have the right people to help him. That's the issue. Mm -hmm. Okay? And I understand that it's it, it's one thing to say that, but it's also another thing to find a way to make this work. It hasn't worked, okay? Right. Josh Gordon, I don't think... If this happens again, I say he's done. There's no... I mean, he should have been done a long time ago, to be honest with you, because yeah. this is getting ridiculous at this point. And the NFLPA, I'm sorry, I disagree with them. I think it's absurd that... They're, they're even considering him uh, uh, coming back to the league, okay? He has given chance after chance after chance after chance after chance after chance. It's time to give it up with him. He needs mm -hmm. to understand when you break these rules, there are consequences. And has he paid some of those, most of those consequences? Sure, but not fully. He keeps doing it. Why? Right. Why? Figure it out. I think, I mean, it's it's gotten to the point where, we, you know, we've given them enough chances. and or the, the NFL has given them enough chances. I keep saying we, but, I mean, it's just, it, it's gotten to the point where we need to understand that if this happens again, he should be done. And I don't think they're going to listen. They're going to keep giving him a chance, and I think it's stupid. But, um he needs to learn, and I don't think he's he has yet. So that's just my thoughts on it. Voldy, what do you think? I just don't understand how Demora Smith from the NFL PA yeah. just keeps allowing this to happen, especially with all the guys that are involved with the PA as well. I mean, I'm looking at some of the guys that are vice presidents, the executive committee. You know, you got J.C. Treader, who is actually the president of the PA. Uh, you got Sam Ocho, Thomas Morstead, Lorenzo Alexander, Calais Campbell. These guys, Malcolm Jenkins, Richard Sherman. These guys you would think would be able to go to Josh Gordon, sit him down, and tell him to cut the crap because this isn't happening anymore. And yet it continues to happen. I'm giving Josh Gordon, if he gets on a team here, week 12. Week 12, he will either be cut by a team or he will be suspended by the NFL once again. We'll make it week 12 of the NFL season. Okay. That gives an extra five weeks there for somebody else to either pick him up or whatever. Let's let's put this down. Week 12, he's either going to be cut by a team or he's going to be suspended. Who knows? Maybe week 12, somebody will finally sign him. That's usually how it's worked in the past. In his you know ninth stint that he did with Seattle, it week seemed 12, like yeah. the last couple of years. But 
You know, I'm just, I just don't understand how he keeps getting all these chances. Well, there are guys that, again, are pumping gas, working, yes. at, you know, working at, you know, bars and clubs that will literally play for, you know, just to be able to get into the building in the first place. And Josh Gordon just keeps getting handed down all these opportunities. Look, I don't know Josh Gordon as a person. I don't know what kind of work ethic he has, but he's got some sort of determination to be continuing on with this. Let's just hope the 30 for 30 on Josh Gordon's going to be pretty good here in about five or seven yeah. years. Who knows? Who knows? It could be coming a lot sooner than that. Let, let me put it this way, too. He has all the t- He had all the talent in the world. All of the talent. And he threw it all away. And he I th- was the shining star on the dead years with Cleveland, yeah. too, before Manziel got there. He tore up the Vikings that one yeah. game back then. And, I mean, why would you just want to say, you know what, I'm just going to do you know, do what I want here and drink, smoke, and all that, all this nonsense when you've been told not to. Right? And it, it's, it, I, well, how many chances are we going to give this guy? Okay, week 12, I have it written down. Uh, Voldy, but uh, we'll make sure we get a, a record of it, and we will. We will. We'll see in eleven uh, weeks. Yeah, we'll see in eleven weeks. But uh, I agree. I'm with you, hundred percent on this. I, I, it's, you know, if if the oh, I, I should have answered your question now. Uh, what team do I think he'll go to? I could see Gruden. I could see Gruden, uh, our guy John Gruden, going. Hey mm-hmm. man, Josh, we need you on the team, but if you f up, man. They're going to get cut, and I think I like that's it. what's going to happen. Um, but I'll go with the Raiders. Do you have a team in mind, Voldy, before we If on? I had to pick one team, I don't know why Houston keeps jumping out to me. I know that Vegas would definitely be a good spot for him, but maybe Houston, maybe add another weapon there for, uh, you know, Tyrod Taylor there in crew. So we'll see. We'll see. I'm just sick and tired of, <laughs> of talking about, hey, oh, he needs to be reinstated. Well, there's other guys that have opportunities here, too. Don't forget about that. So, uh, anyway, uh, that's our thoughts on that. A great job with Absurd or Approve, as always, Voldy. Always fun. By the way, week 12, yeah. the NFL season, that's Thanksgiving. So, FYI. Okay. Friend, but... Good to know. Good to know. Thanksgiving. Um, Hopefully Josh, hopefully Josh knows what he's doing because uh, chances are running out. Chances are running out yeah. here. So, but anyway, but what's not running out is Shield shoutouts. That that's what's not running out for this week. Voldy's got a, a nice, a cute little, uh, uh, cute little uh, cute. shout out. He it's says cute. cute list here yeah, this week. It's a cute list. It's I, compact. I will say it's a down week for Shield shoutouts. Not saying it's a down week. It's a cute one because there's enough content to give out the shoutouts. That's all I gotta say. It's as it's as cute as Case Full. I mean, that's the that's all right. I'll doing. give. I'll let that slide. You let that slide. All right. All right. Fair enough. All right. Let's get it going. What's up? Shoutouts. Shield shoutouts. All right, Shield, who you shouting out tonight? Lowell, well, the cute list will start off here this <laughs> week. We're going to give congratulations to a couple of studs in the NFL, including former Marshall High School Tiger, former NDSU quarterback, yes. Trey Lance on his first career pass, being a touchdown in the NFL in the 49ers 41-33 to victory over Detroit as well. Not bad for a kid from small town, middle of nowhere, southwest Minnesota, <laughs> throwing a touchdown pass in his first game in the NFL. So congrats to Trey Lance. I also got to give a shield shout-out and congratulations to New England quarterback uh, QB1 that is Mac Jones, a.k.a. Max Daddies, uh, for his first NFL touchdown pass, which was to Nelson Aguilar, but unfortunately a loss to the Miami Dolphins as well. I've been being getting ridiculed by that by a couple of Dolphin fans that I know as well. <laughs> in particular, Jory Koonsman, if he's watching, which he probably isn't. He's too cool for the show, apparently, to watch <laughs> in the first place. But shout out to Max Daddies for his first NFL touchdown as well. Got a couple of retirements here this past week. Did learn that uh, former Boston Bruin, former St. Louis Blue, former Anaheim Duck. <laughs> And uh, Minnesota native uh, David Backus did sign his, uh, I should say, uh, did announce his retirement from the NHL as well, battling injury towards the tail end of his career. He announced his retirement from the NHL, signing a one-day contract as well to retire as a member of the St. Louis Blues. But I remember him mostly from his time with the Boston Bruins and his short little stint there. 
Could have wished it would have been more as well, but the former Mankato State, Minnesota State, Mankato Maverick, David Backus, did announce his retirement from professional hockey as well. And actually, uh, yesterday it was announced that uh, former uh, Milwaukee Brewer, the all-time home run king for the Brewers, Ryan Braun, the 2011 NL MVP, did announce his retirement as well. It was just one of those. It's just like, oh, yeah, I guess he hasn't been playing this year or the past year as well. Because I remember it was like early in the season, it was like sitting front row at like one of the Brewer games. Like, really? wait, I thought he was still on the team. I just thought he wasn't playing or something like that. But apparently Ryan Braun is now retired. And uh, hard to believe a guy who won the 2011 MVP that did actually get popped for steroids as well. Is, yeah. Uh, one of those guys that did get kind of swept under the rug, along with David Ortiz, too. I'm not going to shy away from that fact. But you know what? Hey, good for Ryan Braun to go out the way that he came in unceremoniously and you know what ended up having a nice little career there a couple of uh career accolades winning the mvp and you know had a couple of nice postseason runs with the brew crew and there we go that's it for shield shout outs this week well i do have some inside sources about oh. ryan braun um from what i understand and uh cole munson can attest to me on this and his girlfriend Once. Alyssa too um she's a big Brewers fan. Of course. Thing is, is Ryan Braun's not the most nicest guy, uh, from what I understand. From what Him I understand. and Danny Valencia. Him and Valencia. Oh, okay. Yeah. Interesting. Buddy, buddy, because they went to Miami We together. have, I have some inside tracks on that. So, Voldy, uh, maybe for another time we can get to Ryan Braun. Maybe he needs to be on the infamous list. But uh, I, I heard he, uh, he was very rude to a, oh, a little kid, I believe. And that is uh, that kind of ticks me off a little bit. That's for sure. But I've got some insight on that. But uh, um, and also, I think him and Rogers were really good friends. Not so much anymore, especially being Probably lied not. to. Uh, so I don't know. He's gone though, and uh, I don't know. Uh, I mean, yeah, he was very good. I mean, like I said, MVP. Like you said, MVP, NL MVP, two thousand eleven. But yeah. Uh, a lot of controversy, I believe, with Ryan Braun. So. Oh, yeah. Okay, here we go. All right, great job, uh, as always, with Shield Shoutouts. It was great uh, to see um, the Max Daddies. That's the new one now, the Max Daddies. Max Daddies, baby. And then Trey Lance, <laughs> of course, uh, you know, especially with Voldy and I going to SMSU and whatnot, being within the Marshall area. It's yep. really cool to see someone from from that area really succeed in the NFL, and uh, I think he's going to be taking over a starter soon. Uh, uh, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. But uh, anyway, uh, as always, uh, we 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 got some things to take care of. Um, for one, we do have uh, our pick 'em. Okay, uh, make sure you make your picks. Obviously, Thursday game is tomorrow. Make sure that you get those in. Uh, because you're gonna, you, you keep doing these picks. You're gonna enter yourself into possibly at the end of the season win the Minnesota bundle, the big prize, the big, the big prize, baby. So make sure you make your picks and whatnot for that. Um, we'll have no prizes for this week, but we, we promise we're gonna do uh, do one here. I, I think week four we're aiming for. So yep, uh, week four we'll have another prize to uh, uh, for giveaways. And, and whatnot. And we'll keep it posted. Uh, and then also, uh, we got stickers. We got plenty of stickers. stickers. And uh, Jimbo's getting one of these bad boys too. We'll see where he uh, puts the puts this one. But these are three dollars. If you guys want to buy stickers, they, they're pretty sweet. Um, the bumper stickers three dollars. Voldy's got some of the small ones. They're only two dollars. If you're like, you know, I, I do like to pick them and everything, but I, I'll just pay for them and whatever. It works fine. So uh, we got plenty of stickers that we can give you guys, and um, they're sweet. They're awesome. And we mm -hmm. got to thank National Fleet Graphics, um, Crown Rental, Tyler Knutson for getting those for us. And then also we got shirts. And if you buy a shirt and or a sticker, it helps us keep this on the air. Ecamm Live, we pay for it and whatnot. Obviously, you don't get the DJ Maddie C on the back, but – you're getting this bad boy. Five out of five stars from what I understand. And also, the hats are getting close. We're getting close, yep. folks. We're getting close on those. So uh, we thank Jimbo for helping out with that as well. Um, and then, uh, yeah, like I said, uh, sweatshirts, I believe, are coming here soon for fall. So uh, 
we'll keep uh, keep you posted on that as well. But it helps us keep uh, the interne internets and all that fun stuff here for you. But also check out W2 Performance, the Barbell Nerds with Will Rattel. Uh, he's got content almost every day, and he's doing a fantastic job. He's giving a lot of insight to he. I mean, it, it's Rattel. We we love Rattel, and we're gonna oh, yeah. we're gonna get him on the show here. He's got stickers available, two bucks. Pretty doggone simple, right? Uh, and then also check out Jack's Junkyard now with apparel. Uh, Jack O'Keefe doing a great job with his show. Uh, make sure to check him out on the Facebooks and socials. And then Breaking Into the League podcast uh, with Sam Gabrielli, Ryan Martin, uh, available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Um, they're working on getting a new episode here out. And, you know, he's got Gab's got to do the weather and all that stuff, so he's a busy, busy guy. But uh, we'll make something happen with those guys. It's, it'll be fun to talk some hockey because um, we need to sign uh, this guy. This guy. Hopefully. Big old nine sev. We got to get uh, Kaprizov uh, going here too. So yeah. Anyway, uh, Training great. camp's coming up here before too long. Couple of weeks. It's a good point. Let's get them going. Let's let's get the deal done, Billy. Let's get a deal done. We're keeping our fingers crossed, <laughs> hopefully. But anyway, uh, Voldy, great job as always for this week and uh, episode eighty. Episode eighty next week. Oh, wow! Voldy. Yeah, isn't that okay. crazy? At eighty, we're getting closer okay. and closer. Who knows who might show up? You never know. We got maybe we even check in with Coop, see how he's doing. So yeah, uh, we'll go from there. We got a lot of options, as the Curve Doctor likes to say. So we got a lot of fun content coming. But uh, as always, remember, folks, keep in the zone. Holla. Thank you for watching Minnesota Sports Live. Join us Wednesdays at 7 p.m. for live show broadcast. And as Voldy likes to say, follow us on all the socials medias.